Hi. We're here. Just waiting for everybody to get online. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Yay, everyone's joining. So I'm so excited. I'm going to have Mr. Chris Thompson joining me today so that we can have some good conversations. And there he is. We're waiting. Hey, hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm really well. Day's going well so far. Might look like my ring, but it's going good. I know. You know what? I'm surprised. It's actually a lot warmer outside than I thought it was. Um, I'm so glad you're here today um, to talk talk with me and uh, you know really kind of look at getting back to school and what does that mean for our young peoples and everyone trying to cope. I know we probably have some parents on the line as well who are probably wondering, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't blame you. It's a hard decision to make. Hey, everyone joining in, joining in. And you know what? I'm so impressed with you. Hi, Romaine. Um, you know, <laughs> you've done so much and, you know, you're young. I know you're young. <laughs> <laughs> so kudos to you. Uh, you are, I'm going to start reading some of the bio because, and, and everybody always feels uncomfortable when this happens, but you'll deal with it. <laughs> no <problem. laughs> so, um, oh, unicorn breeder. I know who you are, Francis. How are you doing? Um, I, I'm just so impressed with you. You have been a very passionate leader and youth leader. You've done so many things for young people and, you know, you, you've lived in Brampton. You've attended almost 12 schools. 13. 12 schools? 13. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm blown away. Um, you know, you've, you, you're just uh, such a compassionate leader and you've been, uh, president of U of T of uh, uh, Mississauga Student Union, Union, and that's like over 13,000 students. That's phenomenal. Um, you do so much work with the United Way, and um, you've the, you're a chair of the United Way, sorry, I can't talk, Young Leaders Council in, in 2015. Um, you now serve as at the UFT as a past president of the UTM Alumni Association, over 50,000 students, it's amazing. And you're doing so much work with the United Way now in your career, and now you, you're taking on skills for life, which is so great. Um, life skills is something that, you know, it, it, you really do need to be taught. And, and it's hard and it's easier when you get taught the life skills rather than trying to learn it along the way. So. <laughs> Yeah, tell me about Skills for Life and, and what are some of the things that you've been doing? Yeah, thank you. And thank you for having me. This is great. I'm glad to see everybody joining on. We're going to have a great conversation. So yeah, yes. um, Skills for Life is a charity I founded a couple of years back, probably 2016, 2017. And the whole idea about it was to your point about life skills development. And what I learned was, I'll be honest, I was never the smartest kid. I never was the, the A plus student, whatever. But I, I was fortunate enough to realize, and maybe it was through going through so many skill, schools, that if you picked up on certain skill sets and you started training them, you were able to navigate mm -hmm. life a little easier in terms of that challenges and opportunities come up, but because you're developing these skills, you're yeah. able to tackle on. For example, like you don't learn the importance of networking till most people are talking about it when they're looking for a job. But exactly. when you're talking to kids from when you're on the playground to going to school, you're already networked. You just don't realize you're developing the skill set. How right. to read body language, how to do different things, uh, financial literacy, learning how to save from an earlier age. Unlike me, I ended up with two credit cards by the first week I was at university because they gave me a free bottle and, and towel. And I had yes. <laughs> yeah. no I, I was happened. drawn in by that table and it as exactly. well you know you walk by the team you're like oh yeah. free stuff free yeah stuff, you're I so right credit card. so that's basically how it started and i realized that even though 
through my, uh, I guess, my journey through school and education and so forth, I was able to tap into these skill sets and I learned it helped me move forward. And I saw some differences in my friends and some family. And I was just looking right. at what was the difference. So I really just started yeah. writing it down. I decided later on, I really wanted to give back. So I tried to motivate other youth to just start learning about the skill sets from an earlier age. So by the time mm -hmm. they are in their early 20s and so forth, they're a little bit ahead or can handle some challenges and opportunities when they come up. And it's so smart, you know, because it the skills, you know, life skills is is so important. It's the roadmap on how you're going to get through, navigate difficult situations. It's also those key coping skills because life is stressful, and especially right now with COVID, you know, I, I'm sure many of the students, many of our young people, have had to kind of figure out how to keep themselves occupied, how to keep themselves engaged. Also, you know, where to work, how am I going to make money? So many different questions that they have to try and navigate and figure out. So I, I have to ask you, what are some of the top tips and advice that you have for young people so that they can be successful this school year with all of the challenges with the starting up? So what are some of the top skills and advice and tips? And that's a big one. I think the first one I'll share with you guys, I think, is to be open to new ways of learning and interacting with others. People don't like change. They don't like stuff changing and from what their norm. I want to be the same friends. I want to be the same classes. But this year is a year of change and acclimating. Mm -hmm. So you have to, in yourself, be open to it. And I'll be more specific. Even in the first week, as we know, these schools are doing some orientation sessions with the youth. youth I know all the time you like to listen to rules and things, but this is a really good opportunity to listen, yeah. ask as many questions, not just about school, but your safety, what's going on, from your principal to your classroom teacher, what do they have? Share your right. concerns. That would yes. be number one. Yeah, that's good. And get ask the questions because if you don't, you don't want to have to try and figure it out as you go along. You're absolutely okay. right. So that's one. So the, the next one I'll say is big and you, you got to do this because it's going to help you in life is create a routine for yourself. Yeah. The idea of getting into a routine, it's, it's needed now and it pays you dividends when you're an adult. So That's right, right now, weeks are winding down. You need to get used to going to bed a little earlier. You got to get used to getting <laughs> off the phone a little bit, setting alarms. So in yeah. a, what I give advice is you can use your phone for more than just social media. <laughs> you can use it for alarms. <laughs> right. You can use it for tasks. There's a whole bunch of apps, and a lot of them come with your phone now. Parents get involved and maybe sync up some alarms so you work together at it. Because parents are not the best at it either in, in using schedules too. So maybe you're uh, right. pushing each other. But it's important to get into a routine before and while you get into school. That's right. And, you know, uh, I, my oldest son is 16. And so, yeah, we're, we're having to re, re, you know, recalibrate the body and doing having those routines. It's so important. And, and you know what, I really like that you said parents, you know, because <laughs> sometimes teenagers, they don't want their parents to be involved. I've got it. I know what I'm doing. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Sometimes the parents, we need to help our kids kind of navigate how to get back into a routine. And, and if you could just kind of share, what is a good app or, or something that kids can use to help manage their, their schedule and get back on track? Well, nowadays, is the great thing about smartphones is that they come with plenty directly. Honestly, don't even download. Um, if you have a Google phone, Task Manager, something that's on it or you can download, Google Tasks, those help you to actually put it in order and you can set alarms with the task. If you have an iPhone right there, you already have an alarm function directly built into your phone so you can use right. those as well. And you can just set your tasks so you don't even have to download additional apps to do that. It's just that you right. can, youth get phones and the first thing they do is all of the social media. So you don't actually look at the day-to-day -day functional tools within your smartphone. So they're actually there Whoa. right there. Oh, sorry, go mm -hmm. on. Yeah, no, sorry, kind of glitched for me. But yeah, you're right. Everything is so in the phone and we, we need our kids to just use them. And and I'm glad you mentioned some of those things because sometimes it's helpful when I do sit with my son and I say, okay, let me let me look and let me kind of put things in. These Fitbits are also really great mm -hmm. if you guys have Fitbits because you can sync them up and you can get a vibrating alarm and also you get your little messages on what what's mm -hmm. coming up next on your schedule and stuff too. Yeah, so that that's some good ones. Come on, keep it coming. What other what other <laughs> well, tips? On to, uh, the one, the third one. I'm just gonna space it out because I think it's very important. It becomes it's become attached to our hip and our and for youth to catch their hand. So I'm really gonna stress the mobile phone, the, the phone you have in your hand. That device 
can break you or it can make you in all aspects of life, school, learning, and going forward. The, I, the ability of what you have in your hand, if you want to be successful at school, use your phone and not just your phone, your computer now. One thing about youth is they've been thrust into the environment of using so much technology. Like even I, I have my nieces and some people I look at their emails. My niece already has 300 emails. You have to get into the point of organizing these things because now yeah. they're in the they're almost like adults where we have our work but then you have a bunch of junk and when you see that large number of 200 emails you don't even want to look at it so you're yes. already done from the start so they need to learn now skill sets like we learn of how to empty your um, emails how to categorize things and so you want to learn these things and start doing it from now so when you get to school you're ready because mm -hmm. you're getting a, my niece, she's 15 years old, and she sees 200 emails, and she's done already. She's like, oh, this is Right, yeah. <laughs> Tell your niece the feeling's mutual. I feel <laughs> that, too, when I see all of the blue popping up yeah. on my emails. But you're absolutely right. And, and so using your cell phone to make sure that you're using it to manage your life, you know. Yeah. Sometimes it's fun. TikToks are great. You know, uh, Snapchat's been great and everything to connect with your friends, but also it can be a great tool. Absolutely. So what do you have? What kind of tips about masks? Because, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, I, I have to get a mask because it is mandatory um, mm -hmm. right now. Uh, every all guys, you guys are going to have to wear masks in classroom. Yeah. You know. It's going to be uncomfortable. So what kind of, you know, like, tips that you have for some kids that are trying to figure out how to do this mask thing <laughs> well a couple of things so this is part of the top five we're gonna have to normalize wearing masks and making and maybe just making it creative and fun a little bit too so the idea is um if parents can look what they use and maybe look online and look at different ones maybe get some different colors and different ones so they can switch it up through the week you know kids are a little fashionable now obviously it's right. appropriate for school but maybe they have a different one so as they're getting excited for the outfit they also get excited for the mask Number right. two, if you are like me when I was a kid, somehow in grade four and five, I went to school with one shirt and I came back with a different one. So I, mean, you know, like, so I would, if I could lose that and that was on my body, kids are definitely going to lose masks. They need extra. So maybe it's That's a nice great. one you might give depending on the maturity of the use, but then they need uh, the disposable ones. Get a box of 50. You can get them at the dollar store. So and make sure there's one or two in their bag as they go to school because by the time it was me by the time i get off that bus and make it to the class i don't even know where that thing went i don't know that's and I, right and i just i don't know, I don't know. And that's <laughs> yeah <the same. laughs> so they're gonna that's need a right. couple of them you're gonna have it's to normalize so the mask thing give them a couple get them used to wearing it um to do different things so it becomes just a second nature my uh yeah. again i always point to my niece and my family the friends the youth that i talk to some of them have it hanging from their wrist now they get ones that have a band enough that it can just be on yes. their wrist and it's That's nice right. and cool and sometimes they're different colors so it still goes with what they're wearing so they don't mm -hmm. they don't are annoyed by having it there because it's kind That's of right. our skirt. so we're gonna have to normalize it make it creative maybe get there's some parents who are letting kids make masks and color them and stuff yes. obviously we have to be sensitive to schools and what they want and that is appropriate but i think if we can have a little fun with it too and have it a little unique colors and stuff and chase it up through the week it'll make people mm -hmm. feel a little bit ease about it Absolutely. You know, and I like the suggestion about having the disposable mask in your bag, because at least if you do lose your, your fashionable mask, you do have a disposable mask. Exactly. Oh, it's going to happen. Trust me. It's, it's going happen. to happen. And guys, please, <laughs> if you're wearing your disposable mask, please put them in the garbage. Oh, my gosh. We've had such a heck of a time in the city with people throwing their masks on the ground and they're flying and floating through the air. So please throw them in the garbage that would be so helpful <laughs> well, somebody said personalize the mask that might be good too especially for yes. the younger kids under grade five or so definitely personal mask you don't want a kid coming home with a different mask and you're like whose mask is that yes. I, when i was a kid i'd come home with different chairs different stuff and they would ask me whose is that i'd be like i don't know Ooh. so you don't want that happening with the mask <laughs> that's right and you know some places are even selling those little taggy things you know the little clip that people would wear for their glasses they can have mm -hmm. little hooks and you can just put it on. And if you take it off, at least it's around your neck and it's, exactly. it's not going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Actually, and Rabina just said um, mask lanyards for children. That's exactly oh, that's what I'm talking about. Thanks, Rabina. Yeah. So it's so true. Okay. So we've got, you know, talking with the teachers, making sure that you're asking the questions. Um, and that communication is going to be so important because I know many of the high school kids are going to be either going in the morning or in the afternoon. And it's so funny because it's almost like we're going back to kindergarten back in the day when kids yeah. would go to school half day. 
that's what it's going to be like for a lot of high school kids. So you're really going to have to be able to talk to your teachers and say things like, like get to know what is expected of them. What do they need um, to make sure that they're not going to fall behind in their classes? Um, routines. You got the routines. Using your phone to help establish those routines. You know, uh, what about peers? What do you got to say about friends? Because everyone is so hungry for that human contact, the human interaction. And I, you know, school is going to be social distancing. I don't know, man, with high school students. So what do you got to say? For that, I mean, this is the big one because uh, we know youth have been dying to see their friends and they're already starting a little bit. And we know right. with social, um, their peers are very big. I think it is important for them to stay connected, but physical distancing is going to be also very important. Exactly. So one of the big things I tell youth is we're going to have to really try to avoid the large group gatherings getting around whether it was uh i i remind you we were getting it was a big circle around a rap battle or somebody was doing yeah something and these big groups would start up but you can't do that yeah. anymore you have to disperse and try to have some uh, um close friends or a small knit group that you are actually engaging with more so you know it's the same people all the time i mean right. gone are the days where you're going to be shaking hands and all that stuff i think we want to avoid that and just know no one's being mean and they don't want you around and stuff is yeah. just keeping some distance but i think the best thing is to now with your cohort, you're going to have a smaller cohort. It's going to be very important to try. If you, Hopefully some friends you already know are within the cohort that you're in, but you're going to have to try to make some friends within that because you're going to be spending a lot of time with them too. So it's yeah. always helpful if you have some key one or two people within a cohort you know um, that you can get used to and have conversations with them. You know, um, we talk, we're not there yet, but when we talk about anxiety and about this whole COVID thing, I'm sure people mm -hmm. have it too. So you can talk about what they're doing to stay safe. So you right. feel more comfortable with people. A big thing is with yeah. the peers. You know, uh, I always said this back in the day. It was before, like, if gum popped out and somebody saw you with gum, everybody like, yo, I need to let me know. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be yeah. hand sanitizer. Like, the hand sanitizer is coming out. Everybody's like, give me a drop. Give me a drop. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. You're everybody, so right. So, so everybody's going to need that hand sanitizer. And that's going to be the little thing, Chance. Is going around, everybody's going to be giving you hand sanitizer. So, Get yeah. used to doing that around your peers, um, but also you're going to have to do the physical distancing thing instead of being so close, six meters apart and yeah. uh, sitting down. And we're just going to try to make the best of it. I know it will be hard, but as long as they intentionally try and start from now and focus on it, it's right. going to be helpful. That's right. Exactly. Good point. <laughs> Give me a drop. Bust me a drop. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And yes, pick up your hand sanitizer. Please, please get your little bottles. And then that way they even have little attachment things for your bags and stuff like that. So yeah, so those are some really, really good tips, you know, practical things that people can do. I just want to hail up Mindful Parenting Toolkit. You guys, are on, you're on there. I see you. Thank you for giving your suggestions. And, and, you know, so I'm wondering about, you know, schoolwork, because, man, you remember how people were feeling towards the end of the school year, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm really feeling for those kids who were graduating, and they couldn't get do the graduation with their friends and everything. So, um, you know, as we get into this new school year, and you, on top of your routine, you got to figure out how to manage your time. But what about just accomplishing your school goals? What do you have to say about that? So a couple of things. First thing I'll start with is setting goals is so important. That's what I teach. Um, mm -hmm. Smart goals is even more important. So if you don't know what SMART stands for, it's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And basically, right. the reason why we break down setting our goals, so they always have a higher chance of achieving a goal when it's specific and you can break it down rather than a general right. one. Like I want to, um, I'll use, gen I love sports. So it's going to be like, if I want to be a better basketball player, I could say that, but maybe I could say I want to be a better shooter and then take how many shots I want to take for the and calculate it. For now right. school, it could be saying, I want to be a good student, but it'd be like, okay, my specific goal is I want to find a nice, um, calm space in my house where I can do work. And you try different spaces. Right. Maybe it's at the table. Maybe it's at in your room. And you try to find different spaces that make you more uh, calm to do your work in class. Also, now you're going to be working with your teacher. I don't know how the classroom is exactly going to be set up and so forth. So if you have work that you have to do, you're going to be setting up goals in terms of maybe how much time you have to get something done, um, how right. much you need to study. And I think important this year for school, it's going to be asking a lot of questions, I think. And I'm not to say to annoy the teachers. The teachers don't have enough. They're trying to figure it out, too. But I do think this is a year of understanding each other even more than before. 
Yeah. The study habits, how you work in the class is going to be affected by all this, whether it's anxiety, physical right. setup of the classroom, the amount of material you have to leave. Now kids are going in the morning and have to go home. So I would say setting goals for yourself is number one. Um, just trying to write and writing them down. Writing down right, the amount of right. art, if you want to do it in your phone or on paper, it's fine. And what I also tell you to do is, I know we're talking about schoolwork and everything, but write goals down or things you're already doing. Like if you're getting up in the morning to make your bed or brush it, sometimes write those things down and check those off. You will it feel feels so good, good to check things off. Oh yes. my gosh, I still do to this it day, does. write stuff down. I'll write down something I already just did just so I can cross <laughs> it off. And That's it feels right. good, trust me. You're going to feel good going to the next thing. It's so true. <laughs> I do the same thing. Cross it out. Yeah. You know what? You're absolutely right. And so I want to know how parents can help that piece with the school piece. And, and you know, I, I, th I know as a parent, we can get kind of frustrated. We can get frustrated, not kind of frustrated, but definitely frustrated when we want to see our kids get the work done, or maybe they're not. And they're kind of online a little bit more messing their belt. So how can parents help encourage even that, that relationship with the teacher? So I think the biggest thing is um, understanding that everybody's a person. So, so people work better when they have a connection with people. So instead right. of seeing as a teacher, knowing that the teacher is having to do uh, give your work and she has to figure things out, your safety and the workload, and knowing kind of that, and the parents kind of playing that with the, teach, with the youth and saying, hey, you know, you're going to school to do work, but also the teacher has things to do and explaining how, you know, you need to work with each other. And also uh, parents can show their tips of how they organize them at work. Like I said, kids are not using the computer a lot more, like almost we have to use it at work. So if you sit right. with your youth and you tell them, hey, this is how I kind of, um, organize myself for my work. Here's my breaks. Here's how I set up stuff. Here's my task list. When I don't know something, this is how I Google it to figure something right. out. I think sharing those tips with your youth and even your youth may be sharing some tips with the parent and back it's and true. forth might be a way to build that type up of being able to kind of work through things. Um, mm -hmm. is, is a big thing is just number one to sum that up. It's communication. To be able to talk yeah. and feel free and relaxed and safe to just kind of have dialogue on different things. Mm -hmm. That's the way it starts. So we don't all know everything. And when I yeah. teach Skills for Life, I always say, I take it from Denzel falling forward. It's the biggest thing I teach all the time. Like you don't, you have ah. to try things. You're going to make mistakes in the beginning, especially in the first couple of months, getting used to things and you're going to learn from it. Right. Talk about the things that went well and didn't go well and then keep learning. And I think that's going to be the number one thing to kind of help the communication and just trying things out and dialoguing. Right, nice. You know, I always say, um, when I used to work with parents, I would say, connect, then redirect, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Connect with your kids and then redirect them. <laughs> because if you just jump to redirecting, you yeah. get resistance. So connect and communicate and, and share some of those tips and things. It's so important. So, you know, <laughs> we talked about schoolwork tips, some five top tips, social tips. And uh, I, I saw somebody put in their hashtag, give me a drop. That's <laughs> going to be it. We need to make that go viral this year. Hashtag, give me a drop. Um, you know, and we talked about like the safety tips and everything. But, you know, I, I used to work in children's mental health a lot um, for almost 20 years. And, you know, I, the stress and anxiety that kids are going through with going back to school, how to cope with everything is real it's yeah. so real so and real. you know i i really want to encourage kids to start developing really healthy ways of dealing with this because high school is also a place where very unhealthy ways of dealing with stress can start to rear its ugly head right you start maybe smoking some more weed and trying other drugs or drinking and you know doing some things that are really damaging so how are you suggesting that, you know, through all of the work you've done with Skills for Life and all you've seen with kids going through university and coping with really heavy stress, what are some of the healthy ways that you want to encourage our young people in Branton to cope with the stress right now? The number one thing I think I'll start with is understanding or letting people know that you, whether it's your peer, your family member, whatever, is understanding that stress and anxiety is a normal feeling that you're right. gonna to feel toward these things. Often, especially youth, who especially are not been talked to about feelings and stuff and they don't express it, they don't even understand why they're feeling these things and they're trying different ways to get rid of it. And the first thing is to understand that the feeling you're feeling is normal. 
It's right. not something crazy. And that's where it starts, just the understanding that this is going to happen because we're stressed. Some people yeah. shut down right away. Some people get really frantic. Some people don't know what to do. But the first understanding that it's normal. The second thing I think is it's important to identify people you can talk to. Whether it's somebody directly within your household or it's a, fam it's a friend, a teacher, a counselor, or even some of the youth services that are within Brampton, it's important right. to identify who's the go-to for you. I mean, it's always yeah. great, obviously, for parents listening, it is great if you can build that so they can come to you or even appear in the house. But right. even, if, even if there's some things you can handle, if you know that you're used, ask them, do you have a friend you can talk to at school? Do you feel comfortable talking to the counselor? You need to know that there's at least one person or two people that this person person feels comfortable to just express not even for answers and for direct right like I get it out to let it out to x person and yeah, that's man. the first thing and help them try to find that person i think is huge um mm. peers you know we're seeing it a lot you need to stick together you need to stand together and you support each other so you know instead of seeing somebody nervous in class or anxiety instead of you know trying to tease and do whatever try to say hey what's up and talk to them somebody else is putting them down stand up for them take them to the side and talk to them right. i think we really need to do a lot, a lot of that standing up apart from yeah the, yeah Apart from the physical and, 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 and talk, talking to people, again, I go to this, we do have it. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the phone and social media is an objective tool that can be used to promote goodness or can put people down. And often right. we use drift into just getting caught up in whatever they're seeing. But on social media, you, mo I use, this was my tactic. I did motivational videos and quotes and people. Um, so like Will Smith, I follow him on social media. He's always inspiring yeah. and lifting you up. Yes. There's a whole bunch of things. Motivational Mondays, you can follow that, or just even different motivational um, um, IGs. There's even one called Prince underscore EA. You listen to hey. what he talks about. He starts talks about stress and getting through and empowerment. Those things, the more you see that, the more you're waking up to it, looking at it before bed, looking through when you're stressed, that is what you're going to hold on to. And when you get into those moments of stress or anxiety, you want to do this so much that even without seeing those videos or those quotes, that's what starts popping in your head and motivate you back. And I think you need right. that when people aren't around. Um, and we have that tool right in our hands. So true. The mind is such a powerful thing. And you are the only one that can control your thoughts and, and your feelings and your actions. And so you're right, filling your mind with the positive things that are going to get you through is key, is so key, especially right now. You know, I think a lot of people are, are really stressed. We're seeing what's happening in the U.S. and yeah. the, things are happening here. And so tensions are high, right? Tensions are so high. And, you know, we got to start really thinking about and, and pumping the positive so that we can remind everyone that we are going to get through this. I keep saying that. Everybody's like, hey, you know, COVID's so stressful. I'm like, yes, but we will get through it. Exactly. So <laughs> hope, hope keeps people moving forward. And the idea of knowing that hope. you can get through it the next day, one step forward and one foot forward. That's right. You know, I, I appreciate you saying, talking about getting people to talk about how they're feeling. That's so, so key. Some people also say that a good way to deal with the stress is to get out and do things and be helpful to somebody else right mm -hmm. so you know that is one thing that i always like to encourage even though a lot of kids aren't able to get their volunteer hours but there are opportunities that you guys can get volunteer hours and and get out and help people like if you go to um brampton um dot ca and you can uh, look at this being a support to the seniors task force or the social task force so i want to encourage people to go look into that and even contact us if you want to look at volunteer hours. And um, we have an event that I just am going to plug. <laughs> we have an event at the city and it's on September 3rd um, from 12 to 3 p.m. And it is our first ever youth day. And it's so exciting because, you know, many kids told us that stress and anxiety is a big thing and they want to hear from people who are going to give them some positive messages and positive feedback and information and so we've got some really great speakers lined up on that day with some q a and it's going to be hosted by christina harren um, from city tv and she was a brampton native as well wow. yes <laughs> and also the first hundred people that register will get an spc card so go to brampton.ca backslash Brampton Youth Day, and hopefully somebody will put that in the comments so you can register to go yeah. do it online. So what are, you've given some really good tips and some people that people can go to for 
um, or listen to. What about like who to talk to in your family? What are some things that people can, that our young people can do when they are like completely overwhelmed and especially those times when they're feeling like their family and the people that are close to them aren't there, uh -huh. you know? Uh, so there's a lot. So one thing before I say that, you tapped on something I really want to talk about. So that Brampton event you're doing, you mentioned the yes. first hundred get an SBC card. So for all yes. the youth watching right now, don't sleep on the SBC card. When don't. I was in high school, you know how many <laughs> discounts? You can go to Burger King, you can go to a sports check. You know that, yes. that $50 turns into $40 real quick and you're going to start. So don't sleep on it because I slept on the SBC card. I got it late. I got it like Did you? 12 and then I turned, I, I, and then I didn't get to use much of it. I wish I was using that from 13. Like I wish I was using that from <laughs> yeah. 13. Because you can well, go anywhere even... and save a dollar. So for all those youth watching, I encourage you to be one of the first hundred because when you get the SBC card, all you do is go up, you look at the stores. If they have the SBC mark on the cashier register, you That's show the right. card. And all of a sudden, that seven dollars turns into three. That ten turns into six. So Trust that's what me. you want to cash out. <laughs> now you don't have to be envious of the seniors' discount, man. <laughs> you guys are youth with your card. You get a discount. Trust exactly. me, save your money. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, to your question, yeah, anxiety and stress and mental health is a huge thing, and unfortunately, a lot of people battle it on their own and just take it in. And sometimes, yeah. w w for whatever reason, the environment you may be in is not accustomed to letting that be a space for you to um, release or talk about it and you have to find your right. own way. So I can tell you for youth, um, what I encourage, so what I, through Skills for Life, we call it discovery, your, your journey, your, uh, discovering your path and what makes you, what you're passionate about. Sometimes right. you need to discover and try different things. Hopefully you may have an interest already, whether it's running, drawing, um, reading, listening to music, like I said, motivational things. Sometimes it's when you're feeling stressed is to go to that. And just, mm -hmm. and, you know, take a break from school, take a break from what you're doing, read the book, um, go for the run. For me, it was basketball. That was my outlet. That's what actually got me to university and stuff. I wasn't the best thing, but basketball is what kept me focused in school. Through, I went nice. to so many schools. It was a whole big mess. But the one thing that was constant is I had a basketball. I went out nice. and shot. I shot basketball. And that calmed me down. That refocused me. So whatever your basketball is, you need to identify that. And you need to mm -hmm. cling to that and use that and, and power through it. Doesn't mean it's good. It could be your hobby. It could be something you want to do professionally, but at least you know it is something that calms you down and refocuses. It makes you happy. So that's the biggest reason why you do it. Identify it, and I'll say stick to it and find ways to do it. That's right. Absolutely. Find your basketball. Not literally, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's so good. So, you know, I think a, a, one thing parents have been asking, a lot of people haven't made the decision. And some, some of our young people are the ones who are left to make the decision themselves on whether they're going to go back to school and what is that going to look like. Um, do you have any suggestions? Any suggestions for parents or any, or any for the youth? Yes. Um, actually, it's going to take a lot of reflection. Like I said, when I say we do life skills through life, you're already participating in them. Whether we are at, the difference is we don't tend to analyze our behaviors and what our what we like or do until later when it becomes mandatory but when you're young a youth isn't really thinking about hey i work better when i'm in like a space where i can see people or see stuff or right. i work better when i'm you're not thinking about that but now if you take the time sit with your parents and analyze how you've worked in the past years whether doing work or they give you something to do and did you work best when you could you work and could you handle it being um a little bit to yourself or were you better yeah. than you and stuff and that will play into it also do you, another thing I'll play in parents is, does, does your youth have any underlying um, health issues or anything? If they are more um, prolonged to like, I had asthma when I was a little kid. Mm, so if this was mm. this time for me, it might play into it because I'm a little bit more at higher risk and it might not right. be good to do that. So those type of health things they should consider for the youth themselves. Yeah. I think they're going to have to, it's going to be a little maturity thing because now you've got a little choice. You're young and you have a choice and you have to be real with yourself. And don't think about yeah. it. It's a little bit you're going to get to see your friends, but really think about it as your life. Think about it yeah. like when we're older, we have to think about a job and where we're going to go in careers. Right now, you're right. Like, for the better part of my life, going forward, for my journey, what is good for me? Is it right. to be in the classroom or is it to be at home? And actually yeah. calm yourself to a point where you're thinking about that. Because it's huge. And think about, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, I have an opportunity right now to make a big choice. One of my first big choices, I want to make sure it's meaningful and helps me for my future because yeah. I want to be better. And I think they actually have to do that. And parents can guide them through this. Say, well, 
you know, don't don't really just tease it off to the kids like, yo, you decide. But like, no, you know, you're growing up. You have to make choices. If, it, if it's going that route, I think majority parents might decide. But if the kids are playing into it, let them know and don't scare them. But say, hey, this is part of life. So I want you to reflect. Go go one night and what are the pros and cons of yeah. going back? And then tomorrow, let's talk about what you wrote and what I wrote. And let's right. see how they align and let's make a decision together. I think it helps the youth because they get a little bit of responsibility. It helps the parent yeah. might be an excuse to kind of connect, but I think it's yeah. a good dialogue. Ultimately, I think the parents have to make the call for the kid, uh, like uh, step in and, 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 and uh, kind of help them guide them. But I think it's mm-hmm. a, it's a opportunity for them to kind of learn and again, build a life skill of making decisions. Absolutely. And you know, that's so, so important. This decision I'm saying for all the parents and all the youth out there, this is a very personal decision, you know, a very personal decision to decide whether you're going to go into the school or if you're going to stay home. And only you can really come up with the reasons why you're going to do it or not. And and that guidance is key. That guidance is so key. I, I have no problem with doing the cost benefit or something or doing your pros and cons, you know, you've got to write those things down and put it in front of your face. So you can actually make that decision with a very clear head and, and feel confident in the choice that you make because you have it all laid out there on paper. So I would say, write it down. And I think that's a great exercise to do with parent and child. You give your reasons. I, as a parent, I'll put mine on paper and then you give your reasons and put it down and we'll see if they join together you know and um absolutely i do think it's so important you mentioned about even those sensory things because i think there's a lot of kids that have sensory issues right being Mm. fine feeling confined with a mask or if you have um, allergies or coughing you know those all of those different aspects do play into the decision of whether you're going to be into that in that classroom or not or not and Mm -hmm. and hey i know there are a lot of parents on here who have have younger kids i myself have for other very young kids. And that decision is a very real, it's a big one. Am I going to be comfortable with sending my kids in the classroom or are we gonna do homeschooling? And so, yeah, I, I really, I think it's really great advice to be able to say, do it together. It's a personal decision. You've got to make that choice mm-hmm. and it is setting you up for that future, right? Because you've got to know, you've exactly. got to learn your, your right. learning style. You've got to know what it is. Exactly. You, know, you touch on your yeah. learning style. It's a, it's a part of learning uh, where you learn best or how you study best. I, right. for example, like it took me until university to realize I was not an all nighter person. Like right. I'll sit there, I'll stay up just because people are staying up, but between after 12, like when they post all nighters to four, I'm reading the same yeah. sentence over and over and over. I don't know. Yeah. But then I had to realize, Hey, I'm actually a morning person. I'll right. wake up at, five or four i could actually study earlier and retain it and then go right so i would go to bed get my sleep and then i'll get up early so it's, it's not the same situation but it's the same technique you're understanding who you are and what make, what works for you and this is just another opportunity for you to understand themselves from an even mm-hmm. earlier age okay That's i work right. best in this type of space i work best with this type of sound or non-sound around me music whatever i don't know what it may be i work best you know with this type of uh lighting or whatever and uh, people right. around me or less anxiety, maybe, oh, I'm not as stressed when I'm at home, or I feel, because some people might actually feel more stressed yeah. trying to do at work. I'll be honest with you, I was not somebody, I, I like working from home, but when I choose yeah. to, not being forced to work home. Do you, right, I, right. I want to exactly. switch it up. You know, I like the move, <laughs> but you had to get used yeah. to it, but it's understanding well, what, what you can do and not do and, and working with that. That's right. Yeah, you're so right. I, man, I didn't realize how much I enjoyed working from home. But when my kids are not home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a difference when they're all in the space versus when That's they're true. not. Like, you know, it's not the same. It's not the same. Not the same. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah, man. So I, I, what do you have to say for some of these really older kids, like, um, you know, those going off to university? And, and what are some of the, the places and the people that they can talk to? Because I know you mentioned, uh, I mentioned earlier in your bio that you used to manage some of the student um, associations and such. So, so what are some of our, our older youth able to do um, to get that support? So, um, yeah, so when I was going off to university and also when post-secondary, some of the things that I had that actually spoke to me might be different for some of the youth, but getting engaged and understanding what are all the services on your campus from the student groups, which could be the Mm. student union to even clubs or even to the kind of admins, social things like career. Clubs? 
clubs. That's what I yeah. I was <laughs> so not, not, the, not the <laughs> oh, not the clubs, like, not the, know, the clubs, the student club. So they have student the clubs, student that clubs. Together. yeah. So you can get right. and that's the peers. That's when you get to 18 plus, yeah. you get, and you get to a campus like university or uh, college, you get to be a part of these things. Now, a lot of it's gone virtual, so I'm still in contact with them. So now you right. can look for them. But the good news is they're helping you acclimate even more now because even before you get mm. to students, if you Google your school where you're going and say student clubs or student union, even Google if you don't know and write your school, something will probably pop up. And for more times than none, you're going to have student bodies there trying to help navigate because they've been working hard to figure right. it out too. So when you go there, I did it. My motivation to do all that stuff was kind of different. Mine was also, I was frugal. I was stingy. I knew I was paying all this money to university. I went on it and found out I was paying for a student unit. I was paying for a class. <laughs> That's so funny. Sir, you, sir, you want to, you're, you want to take advantage of your money. That's good. Oh, I teach, I teach you all this. You guys are paying over $12,000 a year to do what? Just sit in a classroom? Right. No, go to the gym. I joined the yoga. I didn't like that. I joined the next video. I didn't like it. But I went and tried different things because I was paying for it. Whether it was $3 right. coming out of my tuition to it. I went and tried the bicycle class. I didn't even like that. But I did it anyways. <laughs> I'm like, I'm already paying for this. So I'm going to try it. Yes. Once. You know? Good. So now, good. Check it out. See what they're offering. Yeah. You know, it's such good advice, especially for all the kids who are leaving, who are going into high into university or college it's so true take advantage of all those perks you're paying for it use it <laughs> yeah you have to try to use what you can and that's that was my motivation but now with covid it's going to probably be the different motivation now is seeing what is opportunity for you to kind of help with your schooling whether it's virtual supports or virtual online mm -hmm. um classes or different things you're going to actually have to try to now to search around and see what's a helpful thing so again right. you're still going to be getting your money's worth because your money's if you go to post-secondary your money is going to some of the supports whether you right. want to use it or not you're paying a dollar or three dollars to some type of mental health support to financial support to yep. study support or the student clubs so check them out see if there's anything useful from them Absolutely. And have no, listen, our, our transit system in Brampton, we're opening up more routes. So please take advantage of them. And then you can make your way back into the city at a, on our buses safely. And so use all of those resources there, man. So true. So good. Yeah. You know, oh. how can our youth best plan for their future like i know you talked about goals earlier and everything and which is so helpful but i'm i'm thinking like this this covid is really changing how people look at life seriously changing how we're all going to look at life it's making major business companies pivot right it's yeah. making small businesses having to pivot and figure out what the best solution is for them so when are our young people oh i feel like i'm <laughs> you, it's okay um yeah i was like ooh, you know when you're you're is, is the screen shaky you know like when your dad videotapes something and it's like really bad camera <laughs> <laughs> no, so I need, I need, uh, the young ones yeah are, so i had left yeah uh, <laughs> yes go find the quiet spot I've, trust me, I've done that a lot see what i mean working from home is different um, but you know what yeah like i was saying this whole covid experience is really changing the way everybody's having to work and you know i think another thing that is people we all have to be very mindful of is we could be in a situation where um numbers might start to really escalate and go up which means all of those great things that you've put in place you're going to have to shift them again to be working from home or or you know who knows they might end up having to close down the schools again if they see a real spike so how can how can uh, our youth really plan best for this for the for the pivot right because the pivot might have to happen again we're starting to open it up but it might have to close back again so how do you think that they can best plan for that time if we have to shut back down again I mean, it's always going to be tough. And, and now that youth are, are going through this time where it's not, not everything's set in stone, we can change day to day. A couple of things are important for them. 
I think youth are going to have to get better at or try harder to kind of stay in tune to what's changing. So not just waiting for your parents to tell you, but now you're going to maybe even on social media, follow the news, follow your school. Yeah. So you get the alerts of what's going on and try to be more mm -hmm. mature about that, that you actually have to pay attention to what is shifting and changing. Um, so right. I would say always tell them to use, because that's where they are. They're not using the same ways that we use it, but they're on their they're on social media. So start following those things, the schools, um, the, the news, different things, so you can keep up with it. Another thing I think is if we do have to start scaling back again, number one thing is it's always important that you are uh, following routines. Like the, the tragic thing that happens when we scale back or things changes again, we lose kind of our direction of, okay, I was working, right. school, but now I'm lost. But what things can you hold still at home if we do have to yeah. shift down to keep you motivated and, and moving forward. So parents, it's not just the youth, but it's going to be both of them. Say, how can I still keep them motivated, reading, doing some school, if not? So I would actually ask schools, too, what their plan is if we have to shut down. How would we continue so you know beforehand? Right. And keep right. doing with those changes. But I think it's going to be a little bit of, we hope it doesn't, but what if it does? So let me prepare the best I can. Let me yeah. try to keep in tune with things. Let me ask pre, uh, pre, uh, questions ahead of time. So I can get as much information to kind of handle it if it does happen. Um, if it does happen, know that you will have to step away from, even though you're seeing your friends a little bit, we're going to have to cut that down very quickly. And mm. I think how, how I get youth to understand it is because they just want to see their friends, but how I sometimes get through to them is think with COVID-19, you might get it and you might not feel the thing and you might not think it's a big deal, but do you have a grandma? Do you have a mother? Do you have somebody else? who has an uh, underlying issue, I have asthma. If it comes back, I could potentially get it. What would you want right. to happen to me? Like explain it those ways and make it a little more real. Because for, uh, for us and even you sometimes, if it, you know, if you don't see it, like really you see it on news, it, it's not really connecting. It's but not real, yeah. Your family or whatever. I mean, like maybe they didn't know, like maybe somebody didn't know you have, I have asthma, I have this. If, you, if I get COVID, I'm not gonna be, I might be sick to the point where something could happen and talk to them that way so they understand why. I think parents uh, right. you might shut down if you just cut everything off, but if they understand right. why it's happening, it might be helpful. Absolutely. I, you know what, that's so, that's so important. And that's also why I keep saying that this is a very personal decision because, you know, you have to look at your family makeup, right? If, if you do have a family member who has diabetes, who has a, like asthma or a pre-existing condition, that might be the one thing that's going to make you say, I've got to be safer or I'm going to keep my kids home or I'm going to be home or, you know, I'm just going to make sure that I'm taking all the, the precautions, carry my sanitizer, bust me a drop kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's, it's really, it's really hard to um, it, sometimes kind of conceptualize it because it's not in your face or you might not know somebody specifically has been sick, but you know, we have to try and create that that environment where we're going to be open to, yeah. you know, encouraging people to learn and understand. Yeah, I see, absolutely. Um, uh, somebody sold, Bree said, it's so tough to explain to a three-year-old. And it is. It's tough for the really young ones who don't really get why I can't just run around and do things yeah. like it's just working through it with them. And um, I think it's going to take time. And I don't, I, I, I think you just have to keep trying and uh, yeah. it does happen. You know, we have to adjust. It's just a part of life what we're going to have to do. Yeah, we are. You know, and I, I think adjusting is, yeah, it's a hard one. Um, but this type of moment has forced us to, right? Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that we would have been going from, you know, hearing about this on the news to, oh, my goodness, we are quarantined in our house for a number of weeks, going through phases. But we look how far we've come. Right now we're in phase three, you know, you can, you know, you just, you have to wear a mask all the time, but you can go to a restaurant, you can go to the patio, you know, you can do some of these things, right? But we still got to be safe because the last thing we want is to see things spiral out of control again. And now that we're in phase three, I'm fortunate of the skills for like, we're going to start doing a little more virtual stuff and things like that. But also in Brampton, I just wanted to shout out a couple of them that are here, but there's a lot of also, um, um, youth services that our youth can go to, the grassroots agencies, Jade's yes. Hip Hop Academy, they're there. They can do virtual classes with them or not. Yes. Uh, uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, they are big brothers, big sisters. Peel Gems for the young ladies, helping people do, to get the youth. These are all things you can go to. If you haven't heard, mm -hmm. Return Love also helps youth, um, even entrepreneurship, 
right now in this time. So there's a lot of things going on. And there's yeah. a lot to pay for each basketball in, in, in Brampton. They're doing it virtually. So there's a lot of different groups um, that people can reach out to um, and try to get engaged in this time and take advantage of it and try to stay active. The last one I'll plug is just BYSI, Black Youth School Success Initiative. You can Google that yeah. too, and they're there to support. So there's a lot of different groups in Peel. And I mean, in Brampton specifically. Can You're tell. absolutely right. There are so many groups in Brampton that do some really great work to help me, you know, keep kids or um, ad adjusted. I always encourage families, especially if parents, even if, if you have a three-year-old that's having difficulty adjusting, you can definitely go to Peel Children's Center. Um, you could also go to Tangerine um, Counseling Services, and they are also offering online um, virtual counseling sessions and face-to-face -face counseling sessions. And um, those are really great um, options. Then there's also, yes, Mindful Parenting Toolkit. Check them out there. Um, and then you've got YSAP, the Youth Substance Abuse Program as well. And they are in Peel as well. And if you're um, having a hard time coping and you're finding using substances a bit too much, it's going to get out of control. Youth Substance Abuse, um, uh, a YSAP, the Youth Substance Abuse Program, is a really great one to look into. Um, and then also just, hey, I, I myself and Counselor Singh, we both co-chair the Youth Support Task Force at the City of Branton. And you could definitely come, go check us out um, on the website there to get so many links. A, a lot of the links that we've talked about and people we've talked about are on that website that you can get support as well. And I will be in the fall starting a youth council and I'll be looking for people to join and youth to join as well. So hit me up, <laughs> send me an email and we'll get you connected as well. So how can people get a hold of you, sir? Okay, yeah, so you know, we're on social media is the biggest way I keep in touch with youth. So it's at the skills for life, Inc. on Instagram. We're also on Twitter, same thing. Um, we're also on mm -hmm. Facebook and even on LinkedIn. I encourage you to start creating LinkedIn they can, uh, and they can follow us as well yes. before we start getting that profile going. Our website okay. though is www.theskillsforlife.ca. And we do have two new programs dropping in the fall. One is called Networking in a New Age, which what we're, we got funding that allows us to do two things. Empower nice. youth networking and be peer peered with us, a young professional, but in new industries, even from influencers to somebody running their own nail salon to different things so you can learn careers. Then we have our second yeah. program that is more of a discovering your path. So we do weekly workshops, one or two with um, life skills. So going through smart skill setup, but and also participating with us, as long as you're participating one, uh, two times a week, we also will pay for you to be part of some of the physical activity programs some, to some of the partners like Return, uh, Return the Love and Zora Basketball. We'll pay for the youth to actually participate in this while they're doing our life skill sessions. So visit hey. our website, register, there's a screening list and we'll follow up and we'll get you in for the fall. Yes, man. Incentivize. <laughs> Incentivize. I love it. That's good. You know what? I do want to shout out to all of the fitness, fitness um, promoters, all of the people who have um, fitness business. I see Toronto Health Fitness saying amazing. Yes. You know, there are so many trainers. There are a lot, a lot of trainers out there that are wanting to train youth as well. And I see, how, you remember you mentioned find your basketball. Maybe now is the time to find your weights. Maybe now is the time to, to, you know, connect with a trainer because a lot of people aren't going to the gyms as much anymore, right? So getting a personal fitness trainer, I think for young people is so, so, so important. It's I'm a really doing, great move. I'm back into um, riding my bike. I haven't ridden bikes in a while, but now I'm doing it. It's amazing how good it feels to just get out there and ride. So I ride yes. to the basketball court and I do some shooting there, but now I've, I've integrated to my routine. And I'm like, I'm riding my bike and I'm like, yo, how did I not ride my bike before? Like, it feels right. so good, it's calming. It's relaxing. So now it's a part of the thing I'm doing. Yeah. And honestly, if you, I, some people are upset about it, but some people really do love our active transportation and all of the bike lanes that we're putting in Brampton. And, you know, it's just going to encourage people to feel comfortable riding their bikes <laughs> on our streets of their city. Let's yeah. get people out of their cars I'm and on their bikes. I'm one of those who switched up. I'm like, bike lanes, man, why? Now that I ride my bike, I'm like, oh, these bike lanes make sense. Yeah, these are exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> That's right. Let's change the culture. We need to get people back on our bikes and riding. Do you remember a time where everybody walked or rode their bike to school in Brampton? You know, you didn't have the big, huge, like, onslaught of cars in the morning at the school. Like, now people are riding. We need to get people back to that, riding their bikes and walking to schools and, and taking back the streets. I think it's such a great thing. Good. If you're converted, convert others. <laughs> yeah, oh, well. I, tell I, I think stories uh, outside all riding bike and show people I'm on it. It's it's a great feeling to get back out there and just ride around. And now some of the bike lanes it helps. I actually take some of them right to the court, and it is very helpful. It's relaxing. So I I just converted to see to see the be the the need for or the what it can do positive for the city. <laughs> That's good. And I want to encourage everybody, please slow down on our roads, please, 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 and um, encourage everybody to do so. And if you do see people speeding, I, I do want to encourage people to um, use Road Watch program and to start tracking down license plates and, and reporting them to the police because our roads aren't safe and we've had too many people hit by cars and such in the city of Brampton. So please do your part, drive slow, make the road safe for everyone. It's it's just going to help everyone. And if you need a please slow down sign, hit up my office. We have them. We want to get them out just to encourage mindfulness, mindfulness on the roads, right? Exactly. <laughs> Thanks so much. You know what? It's like five to five. And it does, I'm wondering if anybody has any questions or anything because, you know, it's been, I've been kind of watching and seeing, but yeah. A shout out Toronto Health uh, Fitness, Samantha. Thanks for joining. I know her. She went to school with me at UTM, actually. So nice for joining and uh, that. But yeah, any question? I'm I'm so for it if they have it. I think we'll have the time. I'll just say on on behalf of like uh, Skills for Life, I want to thank you uh, for having us here to just you know share and motivate the youth and talk about what um, the importance of life skills and their journey. This is part of it. It's a new, unprecedented journey that you're going through, but it's a part of your life journey where you're just gonna build um, who you are as you grow, how you handle challenges. That's what I talk yes. about. You move forward from them. Because don't think this is the only challenge you're gonna face. You're gonna face challenges when it's right. work or life. So this is just one you're gonna overcome and you're gonna see the skills that you learn and you're gonna use those yeah. same skills for the next ones and keep going forward. Absolutely. It's, you know, thank you so much for reiterating that. And you've touched on some really good points and some tips that I just want to pull up again. Um, I know you said, for example, be open to new ways of learning and interacting with teachers. Create a routine for yourself, guys. Um, you know, use your phone or your computer for more than just social media, but download the apps to help you. Um, stay connected with your friends and your peers, but physical distancing. Say another one for me. Come on, Chris. Uh, well, Nicole, Say another one for me. What they should and be doing. Some of the tips. The yeah. tips is to use your, use your mobile and computers, learn how to use that effectively. Um, yeah. Think, um, sharing your fears, like when you get to school in the first week of orientation, um, actually talk about, ask questions share your anxiety and say what are the safety things happening in the classroom. Make sure you understand them. Make sure you're comfortable right. with them and um, be open to the new ways of learning. Be open to the new ways of learning. Yes, absolutely. Such great advice, honestly. I'm telling you, when I when I was working and, and you know, do, doing my job, we were always trying to teach social skills and life skills. But I always said, you know what? Life skills is so important. It is those little key pieces that people need in order to live their best life and make, you know, make the most of all the decisions and, and the, the challenges that they're going to be going through. Because uh, challenges, listen, we're going to go through them, but it's not a bad thing. Okay? No. Challenges help you grow. They help you grow. And this is a challenge. COVID is a challenge. But think about how much more aware and skilled we are going to be for other challenges that aren't going to be so significant. So uh, I use a tagline from J. Cole, there's beauty in the struggle. And that's just hey. there's beauty in the struggle. So you have to look back that's at right. how much growth you, you have going forward and how you overcome. And so that's going to be the biggest part of it. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. So, you know, what? I just want to thank you again for being on here. 
and uh, you know, imparting your knowledge, I think has been very helpful. And we will have this up for people to watch again and, and get all of this excellent information that you've been sharing. So thank you so much, Chris. Really no appreciate this. And you know what? We're going to have to do it again. <laughs> we will do this again. <laughs> all right. All right. You have a great weekend. Bye, everyone. Thanks so Bye, much everyone. for joining us today. Appreciate and uh, we'll be in touch. Take Follow care, at, Skills, at the Skills for Life Inc. Follow our page and keep up with what's going on. So thank you for that. That's everyone. right. At the Skills for Life Inc. And also at Sharmama5, the number five. You can also follow me on there for all the in city information that we need. All right. Thank you so much, eh? And you guys Thanks. take care and be safe. All, all right. right. Bye. Bye.